so nervous. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you're live. Okay, so. And just so you know, only one box appears in the upper right hand corner. I see that. And, and that's that only the person talking? Correct. Mm -hmm. So, it, Jeremy, it wouldn't matter if you stayed on or left or whatever. That's up to you. So, is it these two videos? Should I be. Why, why do we keep seeing all these little. Oh, because you're viewing it on your screen. You can close out of that. So and I should close the YouTube window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just pull that up full screen. Right. Like so. Yep. Are we still on YouTube? Yep. Do we already have followers? So I should probably turn it off. <laughs> uh yeah, there's, there's some people watching. So okay. I'm going to turn off my video too, but I will be here if you need anything. All right. Bear with yeah. us, fans. <laughs> Future YouTube stars. It's great that they're super eager. That's a, that's a great sign.
Okay, the clock just struck seven. So I'm here to proudly welcome all of you future families of Gettysburg Area High School freshmen. And I realize that is uh, many of you uh, coming from within the district already at GAMS. And some of you are probably tuning in, um, having students who uh, attend schools outside. We good? We're live. We're live. Okay, we're working on technical issues. I think we were live, but I'll just start over in case anybody just joined. Again, I'm here to proudly welcome all of you viewers. Uh, I would imagine, hopefully, most of you are families of future Gettysburg Area High School freshmen. And uh, as I said a moment ago, this is take two. Um, I realized that some of you have students who might attend schools uh, that are not Gettysburg Area Middle School. And uh, these, this presentation and the information will apply to you. The, the process of scheduling classes might work slightly different for you. Um, you'll go through the same steps, but likely um, hand in hand with a school counselor. So at some point, once you officially enroll in Gettysburg Area High School, you'll set up a, a scheduling appointment, sit down with the school counselor, and you will be walked through the same, uh, the same process in the end. So all information does apply. I, again, welcome, I'm Jeremy Lusk. I am the principal, proud principal of Gettysburg Area High School. It is a, a job, but uh, probably more so a, a lifestyle, I often say. Luckily, I'm not tasked with saying much about the school because I can get windy when I start to talk about all of the amazing opportunities here at our high school. I get excited, I can feel it in my blood and uh, I can go on for quite, uh, quite a while. Tonight, that's not my role. I'm really just here to introduce uh, our team and let them do the hard work. And, and I'm here with Assistant Principal, Mrs. Kaywood, Christy Kaywood and Assistant Principal, Mr. Mike Rupp. Uh, Mike is going to keep an eye on the, uh, the chat in YouTube. If you have questions, feel free to go ahead and drop a question. He'll keep an eye on that, and we'll do our best to address your questions uh, in a fluid way. Uh, in a moment, Mrs. K. Wood's going to jump on the screen and, and man the controls of this presentation, and you'll also hear from Lee Walton, one of our school counselors. Um, again, I'm proud to lead this building with an incredible team. Uh, we have an amazing staff that is tasked daily with creating incredible opportunities that we're about to describe to all of you. Um, before I turn it over, I will just briefly mention um, a little bit about who we are. If you're already in the district, or maybe some of you outsiders have heard, if you pay attention to social media or the newspaper, um, one word, or I'll say set of words together uh, that we often say is warrior way. It's, uh, it's a simple term with a hashtag that comes with, uh, I would say, a, a fair amount of complexity. So within that, we ask students and we ask you as families to one, be here. If you're tuning in, that's a step in the right direction. Be involved. Again, if you're tuning in, another step in the right direction. Be committed. And that's what we ask all of our students to do. That's what we try to do on a daily basis. And we ask our families to try and make that same commitment to creating a successful future path uh, for students. And lastly, be kind. Um, it's a tough world, in case you don't know. And all we can do is try our best to mold kind people good citizens that are willing to, to go out and, and make the world around them a better place. And that's part of, our, part of our mission daily and continually. So again, welcome, we're glad that you're here. We've never presented this information in this type of way, but I think uh, many folks here in Gettysburg and in the state and in the country and around the world are increasingly comfortable with delivering in such a format. Um, sadly, but proudly, we just adapt and move on. Um, so we're going to do our best. And again, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or get in touch with us at the school anytime it's good for you. 
with that, I'm going to introduce our school counseling team. And then uh, again, I'm gonna turn the controls over to Mrs. K. Wood. I'll first start with uh, Mrs. Lee Walton. And again, she's going to take charge of some of this presentation, describing a lot of our opportunities to you. Uh, we also have Mrs. Polk, Beth Polk, and Anna Palmer, our terrific, outstanding, incredibly talented and knowledgeable school counseling team. And we can't forget Mrs. Knox, who mans the battle station, that, that would be the front desk of the counseling center. So you'll likely speak to the very friendly Mrs. Knox, if you ever call and, and talk to someone in the counseling center, and she will gladly steer you in the right direction. So again, welcome. Um, that is the team that will care for you tonight and beyond. And at this point, again, I'm going to hand the controls over to Mrs. K. Wood and uh, enjoy the ride into the land of opportunities. Go Warriors. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm actually going to send this to Mrs. Walton right now and she is going to um, start our presentation. Mrs. Walton. Mrs. Walton, you're muted. Having a little bit of technical difficulty. My, my computer is uh, kind of acting a little funny. So I do apologize if I have to get up or re, uh, move to another computer or um, uh, reboot or something. So I do apologize. Real quick, I wanted to introduce uh, the Counseling Center staff. Um, uh, as you can see, um, myself, Lee Walton, if your son or daughter has last name uh, uh, starting with A through G, you will be assigned to uh, me for four, uh, four school or four years. If last name begins with H through O, Mrs. Polk will be your counselor for four years at the high school. And last names uh, P through Z, Mrs. Palmer, will be your counselor at the high school. Uh, greeting, you, greeting you as you come into the counseling center, Mrs. Knox, uh, she is our secretary in the counseling center and she will check in uh, your ninth grade son or daughter and uh, make appointments for the counselors. And in addition to um, our assignments for ninth grade school year, our emails are below our pictures. So if you ever need to reach out, ask a question, you can certainly utilize those email addresses. And Mrs. Kaywood, we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, as far as credit requirements uh, for uh, all students at the high school, uh, every student is required to earn four credits in English, and that is typically one credit per school year. So uh, one English class ninth grade, an English credit 10th grade, 11th grade, and then in 12th grade. In math and science, students are required to accumulate a total of seven credits in both math and science. And that could be a combination of three math and four science or four math and three science. Uh, in addition to that, students must take up two geometry uh, in order to meet graduation requirements. They can take more than uh, uh, geometry. However, requirements state that they must take up to at least geometry. In science, students must take ninth grade, either earth science or environmental natural resource management. Those are options for ninth grade science. In addition, uh, in 10th grade, biology is a requirement. In social studies, students are required to earn a minimum of four credits in social studies. Uh, now keep in mind, that's typically one credit per year. However, they can double up junior and senior year. Um, three out of those four credits need to include a world history, an American history, and government and economics. That fourth credit, they do have some options uh, to choose from for that fourth social studies credit. 
Fine arts, practical arts, and humanities. Over the four years, students are required to accumulate two full credits. Most of the time, uh, they get that taken care of ninth grade year. Um, however, that sometimes that spills over into 10th grade, but typically that's a, that's a requirement that's taken care of ninth grade year. Phys Ed, uh, students are required to accumulate a total of two credits, a half a credit per year typically, um, and PE is partnered with ninth grade year, it's partnered with a course called Freshman Facts, and that is a requirement that students have to accumulate for a half a credit. Sophomore year students, uh, their phys ed is partnered with a course called safety ed. That is also a half a credit and that is a graduation requirement. Junior year students are required to take health, which is partnered with their phys ed for a half a credit. And then senior year, all students must take something called personal finance. In addition, that is partnered with their phys ed for their senior year. Uh, 10th grade year, all students must take uh, courses uh, called career and work and research writing. They are a half a credit each. They are two separate classes for a total of one full credit their sophomore year, which is required uh, for graduation. Over and above the above requirements, students are required to accumulate six elective credits. Now, if you total up that credit, those credit requirements, all students in order to meet gradu graduation requirements must accumulate a minimum of 28 credits. In addition, meet all of the above requirements. The scheduling form. Um, uh, more recently, we asked middle school teachers to make recommendations for the current eighth grade class. Uh, so those core subject areas are based on their middle school teacher recommendations. Um, any questions about those recommendations should be discussed with your middle school teachers. Um, as far as those recommendations, they can include math at various levels. Most ninth graders will take at least two math credit or two math classes their ninth grade year. In science, uh, they can take earth science or accelerated earth science if recommended or environmental natural resource management. Social studies, all ninth grade students will take world cultures, will meet, which will meet their world history requirement that is needed for graduation. Um, and in English nine, uh, students will take either accelerated nine or an on level English nine course. Choosing courses. All students must choose a total of nine credits. And remember, uh, those core subject areas have been chosen for you by your middle school teachers. Usually, uh, each class is one credit. Um, unless otherwise indicated on the scheduling form, we tried when creating that form, we tried to indicate those courses that are either less than a credit or more than one credit. There's only a few courses that uh, are not one credit. Um, and like I said, otherwise we tried to indicate that on the form. Um, so you will choose um, within that Google form, you will choose three or four electives depending on how many core classes you selected or your teacher selected for you. It is highly recommended to choose electives based on your interests and or career goals. Our uh, focus at the high school is to ensure and to support um, you being uh, ready for life after high school. So we definitely want our students to choose elective based on not just interests, but things that they may choose to do after high school as a career. So at the end of the Google form, you have, uh, you have a requirement to select three alternative electives. We did make that a required question on uh, the Google form. Uh, scheduling is not a perfect process. Sometimes we do have uh, conflicts that cause holes in the schedule. Therefore, we must fill those holes with 
uh, additional courses or alternate courses. So we ask that students take, um, you know, think long about what alternative electives might be best for them. They may end up seeing them on their schedule, so we want to make sure students are prepared. Okay, choosing courses. Uh, a copy of the 21-22 course selection guide is available uh, on the actual Google form. In addition, it is also available within Canvas, which Mrs. K. Wood's going to review with you in a minute. Um, but uh, a full description of those courses are within that course selection guide, as well as any prerequisites that are required um, to take those courses. And you will also find um, video, great, some great video descriptions of our, our elective courses here at the high school in modules, uh, their eighth grade Canvas scheduling course. Scheduling considerations, some things to keep in mind when selecting electives and selecting courses. Uh, just remember band orchestra course does count as one elective credit. So if they are planning on participating in either or any of those programs or uh, they do need to include that in their elective count. Foreign language expectations. Um, this is a question that we receive pretty frequently, so we always try to include it in the presentation. Gettysburg Area High School does not require foreign language to graduate, although it can be used towards that practical arts and humanities requirement that I stated in the beginning of the presentation. However, most four-year college universities require at minimum two years of the same language to language taken at the high school level. Some require more, some don't require any. The reason why students do take language at the high school level is because it's meeting a college admission requirement. It's important to do your research and it's certainly important to, uh, to look into those requirements so you are meeting college requirements if that is in fact your goal after high school. Scheduling considerations, uh, some additional scheduling considerations we want you to keep in mind. If you're an athlete or if your son or daughter is an athlete and you feel that they have some talent and they may want to play at the college level, there are specific requirements for governing ages such as the NCAA and the NAIA. Um, there are specific courses uh, that they do need to take to meet college admission eligibility and requirements. So make sure that you are connecting with your counselor or the, your son or daughter is collect, connecting with your counselor to ensure they're taking the, the correct courses to, so they're eligible, eligible to play at the college level. Changes to your schedule may be allowed only at designated times. Um, these times we do, we are very clear about uh, schedule changes and when they can occur. Once the master schedule is made, it can be very complicated to make any schedule changes once that schedule has been created and set in our student information system. However, it's not impossible um, but keep in mind, uh, if you're looking to get a hold of us over the summer, uh, and, and when I say us, I say I meant I mean counselor. If you're looking to get a hold of us over the summer, um, it's important to realize that we have very limited time over the summer in the building. So please be patient with us if you're trying to reach us regarding a schedule change or any other matter over the summer. Block scheduling at the high school. Um, now, this is not uh, uh, an actual schedule. This is just an example of what a ninth grade schedule may look like. Um, as you can see, we do break up our year into two semesters. Each semester is 18 weeks long. Um, courses do change halfway through the year with one exception, uh, mod two or period two. Um, we call our periods mods at the high school. Um, that mod two class does go all year. So in other words, semester one, you have a set of courses uh, that are 18 weeks. At the change of the semester, which is typically like mid-January, you have brand new courses with one exception, that mod two course. That will be a course that you start in August and you finish in May. There we go. 
Opportunities at the high school. We have um, a lot to offer here at Gettysburg Area High School. Um, and I, I, when we went to the middle school, I just briefly reviewed this page. However, I wanna, I wanna go into it a little more detail right now. Um, such options as early completion, we have seniors that qualify for early completion and do not have to return the second half of their senior year. We also offer career internships. We allow students to leave for unpaid internships in the community or if they have a job and they wish to report to work, they can earn credit for that. In addition, we offer a very large um, selection of advanced placement courses, such as English language, literature, psychology, and a variety of other things. We are known for our advanced placement courses here at the high school. In addition, we offer uh, college credit opportunities through HACC and more recently through Harrisburg University. So we have students that are accumulating college credits while taking courses here at the high school. Uh, we also have something called Early College Pathway that allows students to start accumulating credits towards an associate's degree from um, Harrisburg Area Community College. In fact, we've had um, many students uh, earn that degree more recently, um, where that, wherein that they are not only earning a a high school diploma, they're earning an associate's degree from HAC. In addition, our students have access to Adams County Technical Institute and the programs that they have to offer, such as culinary, law enforcement, allied health, um, uh, diesel, uh, building, and tra building trades, and early learning. Um, in addition, we also have uh, programs in study and career pathways in communications, engineering, accounting, um, horticulture, landscaping, animal vet science, uh, all these students can continue on in a, in a program of study or a pathway and uh, possibly earn some college credit depending on how many courses they've completed in that pathway or how many courses they completed in that program of study. And not to, not to forget our uh, JRTC program, we have a very well-known JRTC program. It certainly is a leadership program in which our students can participate and learn leadership skills and uh, team building. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity, awesome, awesome program here at the high school. Freshman orientation. Um, we hopefully will be having freshman orientation here in the building come August. So make sure you are uh, keeping an ear and an eye open for that date. It will be announced and much more information to come. And scheduling forms are due March 1st. So make sure that your son or daughter is taking time and talking with you and submitting that Google form in their Canvas account, which Mrs. K. Wood is now going to review. Hello, thank you, Mrs. Walton. Um, I just need to change some screens here. And if you are a, oops. If you are um, a current Gettysburg student, uh, we, Mrs. Walton and I, or uh, Ms. Schmidt and I came to see you uh, at the high school, either or at the middle school, either last week or this week. And um, I walked the students through how to actually complete the scheduling on Canvas. So if your student is uh, at St. Francis or another uh, local school, it will be transferring here and enrolling here at Gettysburg High School. This process will not necessarily pertain to you, but you will be going through something very similar when you make your scheduling appointment with your counselor. So um, these directions are posted on the course. Um, and if you haven't seen Canvas yet, um, this is what it looks like when a student goes on their dashboard, all of their courses that they um, have are up here. And one of the courses they should have now is called eighth grade course selection. So if your student does not see this as an option, just send us an email and we will make sure they get added to the course. So as students click on this, 
you will come to the homepage. Obviously, welcome to the class of 2025. Um, before you know it, we will be there. And um, on this homepage, you'll see two videos. The very first video is actually Miss Walton going through the PowerPoint that she just went through with you all. So if you forget something or weren't sure, you can always go back and check this. So we ask you to watch that one first. And then second is a video of myself going through Canvas and showing you all those step-to-step -step, um, procedures. So again, if you um, forget anything from tonight, feel free to um, go onto Canvas with your student and take a look at this. But what I explained to them today is up in the upper left-hand corner, they should see the button for modules. So they will click on that. And we'll come up with this screen here where this is where your actual uh, course selection will occur. And then I also did put the resource of the actual slide presentation there as well, just so, because some things are hyperlinked uh, that you can access easily. So students would start here where it says, use this form to help you plan your schedule. Okay, this form here is our ninth grade course selection planning form. Um, if you click on the button I'm highlighting here, the, the square with a little arrow, it does create a bigger pop out of this paper. And in fact, you could print it out. Um, when we did visit the classrooms today and last week, we gave students their own copy of this. But if they happen to lose it, no worries. You can always print out another uh, copy. The very first page in that um, course selection are all the courses that their teachers will be selecting for them. So these are the things that Ms. Walton had suggested. You know, their language arts teacher will decide if they are, should take regular English or accelerated English. Same in science, should it be regular or science, acceler science, or a possible other option. Same with math. Obviously, we only have one world cultures and the PE and freshman and family consumer science, there's only one option as well. So that is really up to the middle school teachers. And again, if you have questions about the level that your student has been placed in, I would start with the middle school teachers. On the back side of that paper, or as we scroll down here, we come to all the electives. Now, these are not all the electives that we have at the high school. These are those prerequisite courses or the courses that are available to freshmen to take. So um, there are quite a few different ones. And as I explained to the kids uh, just today, you know, under business and computer here, for example, the very first course is called Tech in the Workforce. Well, from just the title of that, it's kind of difficult to know exactly what that course would entail. So I'm gonna show you some ways that you can learn a little bit more of these courses. But again, this is where you're going to choose three, and then you need to come up with three electives. We also added to this page um, the, the entire high school planning guide, and this would look at all four grades, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So if you really want to look at all of their entire high school career at once, you could go ahead and take a look at this one. But as I told the kids today, let's at least worry about ninth grade at this point. So once you have these forms, uh, let's take a look at what some of those courses would look like. So uh, the next page here is about the course selection guide. Um, this, there's a link here to this guide. This guide is also on our school website. So those of you who do, do not have Canvas access, you can get the planning guide as well as this course selection guide both on our website. Um, I did have the course selection guide already open here. So um, I wanted to show you a little bit of what that looks like. Um, we talked about prerequisite courses. So things like computer-aided drafting and design, which would be our CAD courses, engineering and design, materials processing one, those are entry-level or first-year prerequisite courses. So in order to take digital electronics or mechanical design or TSA robotics in the future, your student would need to start with these level one classes. So this, this is something you might wanna look at um, we were talking to some students earlier today about, uh, you know, we offer classes in pottery and sculpture, but you can't take that until you've taken a level one, um, a level one art course. Uh, we offer immersion video game design. 
but there are, again, prerequisite courses in order to take those. So if you do go to this course selection guide, you'll get to see everything that we offer at the high school and it doesn't matter what level. So um, this is a great resource to take a look at as you are completing scheduling. If we go back into Canvas, you are going to hit the next button, which will take us to our next screen. All right, and up here, what we've done is since sometimes that course scheduling guide can become a little overwhelming, I think it's 70 some pages um, of paragraph descriptions. I went out and asked a lot of the teachers who teach those entry level courses to please make short little videos uh, that might help describe what those courses are like. So as you can see here for art, um, on the, the, the kids scheduling form, they have the options of art one 2D, art one 3D or Art One um, Digital Media Arts. If you watch this video here created by Mrs. Myers, uh, one of our art teachers, she goes through what those three courses would be like. Um, so students can decide, yeah, that sounds like something I'd really like to take, or maybe that's not for me. Um, as you can see, Career and Technology has quite a few videos. The Ag Department has a few. Um, science Department just did one video of, of the sciences that they have. Um, but family and consumer science videos and JROTC business department. Um, this one video here has all of those. So I would take some time, and this is what I explained to the kids, to take some time, look through that course description guide, watch these videos, and really try to make some decisions uh, based on their interests and what they want to do um, as future career goals. Once they've um, made those decisions and they have selected their three top courses and there are three electives. If you hit next here, we'll go to our actual Google form. And this is how you are submitting your courses this year. So as you can see, students will go in, um, just simply type in their name, select their counselor, and then they can select their art classes or their family consumer music, whatever it wants to be. You only need to select three of those. And then at the bottom, um, there is a place there for your three alternatives. So you'll type in the names of the courses of their three alternatives. And then the last thing is just hit submit. And we wanna do that by March 1st. Um, as I told kids, this is not a race. Um, it's not a first come first serve sort of a deal here. So there's no rush in getting this done tonight. Um, in fact, I encourage them to take as much time as they need try to get it in by March 1st, uh, because we will start going through those and putting the schedules together. But schedules really don't ever get released to students until it's late July or early August. So it'll, it'll be till then till they actually see what they get anyway. Um, but just by completing this, we can start that process. If we don't get a form from your student, um, we will be just submitting for them. So I told them really take the time and go through this. So I believe that is all that uh, we had to share with you today. Um, Mrs. Walton or Mr. Rupp, uh, if there is any questions out there that I could answer, I'd be happy to do that. About math course sequence. Okay, math course sequence. Of course, that's a tough question for me, but I'll do the best I can. Um, if I pick up, let me go back to the screen here. And let me go back into Canvas. I'm hoping you can all see my screen. And this, when we talk about math courses in particular, um, your math teachers are really the best people um, that are going to go through what that sequence looks like. Um, most of our ninth graders have some level of algebra when they enter, uh, whether that's algebra one or 1.5, which is really the same class. It's just the first part of algebra and the second part of algebra, algebra one. Um, and then at the end of that, they take their Keystone exam. From there on, students typically uh, move on to geometry. After geometry, typically algebra two. Um, after algebra two, trig, accelerated or regular trig, pre-calc. 
And then really it could go from there um, as we have other higher level courses that they might be taking. Um, any other questions, Mr. Rupp? Just a general reminder about the deadline being March 1st. Yes, okay, yes. The deadline to get that Google form submitted on Canvas is March 1st. And again, if you are, your student is in another uh, district right now or at another school not in Gettysburg, uh, please do not worry about that. Um, you Once you enroll your student at Gettysburg, they will uh, set up a meeting for you with the counselor and um, you will complete the scheduling process there. So um, you are still available to go to our website, take a look at our course selections. Like I said, the planning guide is there for you as well. All right, I believe that's all the questions we have for now. Um, again, if anything comes up in the near future as you are looking through these things with your student, please feel free to contact um, their teacher at the middle school if it's about the, the current courses or if it is about uh, these electives, please feel free to contact myself or one of the counselors um, that we showed you their, um, their emails earlier. So you should know which one is for your student. All right, I hope everyone has a great night. And we look forward to you joining our warrior family here in just a few short months. Go Warriors. <laughs>